What is going on everybody, Weedle Sonilo here, and we are backing in with another Sun and Moon Waifu battle, and this one's going to be against Blake, a person I battle off my Discord server, so if you guys are interested in a Pokemon Sun and Moon Waifu battle, a trade a Discord chat room, and a place to hang out, and find Waifu battles, and meet new people, definitely check out my Discord server, a link will be in the description, and it's the only platform where I am accepting battle requests at the moment, so if you want to have a chance to battle me, get your ass a Discord account, Discord is probably the greatest <laughs> program of 2016 slash 2017. And I really love Discord a lot. Anyways, me and Blake are having a PU battle today as Blake's pack and a pretty scary looking PU team featuring, you know, a sticky web offense with Rampardos, which kind of has me shook a little bit because Rampardos is like one of my favorite fossil Pokemon and having to face that kind of scares me. But I'm using a pretty fun uh, PU team featuring, you know, Z Electric Terrain Electivire, Ferroseed, Perugly, uh, Subat, uh, Z Heal Bell, Gramble, and a Sophist Hariyama because, of course, it wouldn't be a Weedle to Needle team unless I uh, brought two Z moves. I actually did not bring a weakness policy Pokemon in this battle. I kind of like broke the Weedle to Needle code. I'm sorry guys, but I have to mix it up every now and again. I run on a weakness policy Pokemon in this spam, so yeah, we're gonna use a little bit of a different meme strategy in this battle, as you guys will see. So turn one, I lead off with my Hariyama, as my opponent leads off with the Crustle. Now turn one, we're just gonna fake out because I'm not trying to give this Crustle a bunch of free entry hazards. I wanna break that sturdy, but he actually ends up being weak armor, which still works fine for me because that probably means he's Focus Ash, and I still broke his Focus Ash then, so that's fine. But now he only really gets the chance to set up Stealth Rocks because Stealth Rocks, I mean, he. I broke the Focus Ash, and after weak armor, I should be able to knock him out with the stab close combat, and if I don't, I do have the follow-up bullet punch to deal with it, so thankfully, we're able to knock out the Crustle, and he's only able to set up Stealth Rocks, and that's really good for me, because I have no Hazard Remover on my team, because that's another another reoccurring thing that happens in my videos, is that I don't have a Rapid Spinner ever, um, Rapid Spin in 2017, hell no, I just, you just gotta muscle through them entry hazards, you feel me? So now, I'm gonna bring in my Electivire here, because I'm expecting the Sticky Web, and I'm trying to take advantage of any free turns I can get my hands on so gonna bring an electivator here as my opponent is going to lay up them webs and electivator is one of those pokemon that i feel like is really strong in pu but it's just i feel like it's speed stat definitely holds it back and it's probably really strong in sticky webs honestly i should probably try and use it in sticky webs but i have a z electric terrain set and it is a little bit early on to try setting up with it so i'm expecting my opponent to bring in the guzzlord here and i go straight for cross top as a little bit of over prediction but we're able to snipe the guzzlord on the switch in and guzzlord is pretty much too weak to really do anything now i'm not really know what set he's running he could be z stock while he could be choice specs he could be choice scarf i don't really know what sets guzzlord run i just know there's the choice back set and the z stockpile set but yeah i'm gonna go for ice punch here because we should be able to knock out the guzzlord from that range of health as my opponent makes a pivot into masquerade we actually get hit by rocky helmet i wasn't anticipating that one like rocky helmet masquerade that's a little bit of a new one but yeah, my opponent's gonna bring out the Girder here, because I am intimidated, so we should be able to face tank and attack, because Girder with the Violite's actually extremely bulky, as that Wild Charge just literally bounces off its body. And now, I'm not trying to stay in here and take a Drain Punch or Knock Off, so I'm actually gonna choose to switch out of my Electivire and bring in my Gramble here, because I do have the Normalium Z, so I can't get knocked off, and I can just threaten this thing out with Play Rough pretty easily, and go from there. So, I'm gonna get affected by Sticky Webs, as now my opponent is gonna get intimidated by Gramble. Gramble's actually a really nice Pokemon in PU because I can just pivot into fighting types. My opponent was a step ahead of me here. He actually double switches and brings in Rampardos, a nice legit shiny beast ball Rampardos. Wow, it's totally legitimate. Probably a sheer force to boot as well because getting a sheer force beast ball shiny Rampardos is totally possible in the Pokemon Sun and Moon game. But now I'm going to bring in my Pharaoh Seed here and get impacted by Sticky Webs as now my opponent actually reveals the Z move. I switched out because I was fearing Hot Smash, but then my opponent pulls out Continental Crush and I'm like, oh god. I I'm so scared because Rampardos with a freaking 200 base power stab Z move seems like it's going to do a fair bit of amount of damage. So I'm hoping Ferroseed could tank this. It's kind of sad that I'm hoping Ferroseed could tank this because I'm max defense, max HP, Eviolate, and I resist the attack. And it still does almost half to my Ferroseed, which is absolutely ridiculous. But now I'm going to scout for the superpower slash fire punch because I know that's a common coverage move Rampardos do carry because a sheer force fire punch is actually pretty good in Rampardos as my opponent actually um, does pull out the fire punch after this annoying sticky web animation, which I'm getting sick of already. Like the intimidate and sticky web is making me a little bit impatient but it's okay. I didn't get freaking pelted by Fire Punch, and I'm very glad I decided to scout for that move because I want to keep my Fairy Seed healthy just so I can get some nice um, recoil attacks off on this uh, Rampardos in general. So he's going to reveal Head Smash, and it does not quite knock me out because Gramble's just a fat ass doggy. And now I'm actually going to go for my own Z move here, the normal Z move. I was going to save my um, uh, 
a Z Crystal for Electivire, but honestly, Z Electric Terrain Electivire really was not doing me much in this battle anyways. I probably could have swept late game, but I didn't really want to. I want to keep my Gramble healthy, so I decided Z Heal Ball is probably the Z move I should probably use in this battle. And uh, yeah, I guess Electric Terrain is just kind of useless now, but it's fine. My opponent's going to bring a Mask Screen and intimidate my Gramble, as now I'm going to go for the Earthquake. My opponent pivoted it into that Earthquake very nicely, as now I don't want to stay in here and get Toxic or like get freaking, I don't know. So I decided to bring in Ferris here because it's the perfect opportunity to set up my Stealth Rocks, as my opponent's actually, uh, I do believe he does go for a U-Turn. He actually goes for Roost just to get his HP back. Because I guess he's like a bulky mask green with like max HP max defense because he has like rocky helmet and stuff So that's my guess, but I could be wrong But yeah, my opponent's gonna go for u-turn here just to get on out of here Even though he's gonna take a crap ton of damage thanks to iron bars But I guess willing down fairy seeds for the best and I was very close here on clicking leech seed I really was but I decided that stealth rocks were a higher priority But if I got this leech seed off on this guzzlord do you guys know how much HP Guzzlord has? It has like ballistic levels of HP, so if I got that leech sheet off, I would have gotten so much recovery, but instead, I figured Stealth Cox are much more strong because he has a Masquerade and a freaking Magmortar on his team. So overall, I felt like that was the best play, as now my opponent's going to knock me out with the Specs Dark Pulse. As down goes my Ferris, he's going to get the Beast Boost, you know, nice poke game reference. And now I'm going to bring in my Belome here, my Perugly, and now this is my Perugly. I just recently transferred from Pokebank because I forgot I had this Perugly in Pokebank. Bank, and I'm like, I can't wait to use this thing in a W battle, no problem. as he actually carried the Defiant ability, so we're gonna get plus two attack thanks to Sticky Web, and we're pretty much all set, we should be able to outspeed Guzzlord, gonna go straight for return here with my Perugly, and we should be able to knock out this Guzzlord pretty easily, but one thing I forgot about Pokebank, is that if you transfer a Pokemon from Oros to Pokebank to freaking Sun and Moon, or just trade a Pokemon over from different games, it resets their happiness value, so unfortunately, Perugly is not a happy camper because it's a very ugly Pokemon so I can understand why and we're unable to knock out the freaking guzzler with return so we lose our sticky web abuser because we literally took advantage of the fact that he had sticky webs and I think fake out I probably should went for fake out first but I wanted to just kill that thing off with, with return and take as minimal, minimum life or damage as possible. But unfortunately, um, I just kind of fucked up my Perugly there. And I need to make it happy again. So I guess I need to give it some berries. And it's a little unfortunate that my Perugly could not knock out Guzzlord. But it's fine. We're able to knock him out with the bullet punches. Now in comes Rampardos and the Beast Ball. And this thing is such a huge threat to my team. Because I, t I don't really have a switch near Rampardos. It's not too surprising because Rampardos has a monstrous attack stat. But yeah, I'm going to bring in my player up here. It's pretty much Death Fodder. Though. I should be able to tank two attacks from this thing. I'm expecting Zen Headbutt from this Rampardos because it's also a coverage move they usually carry. But yeah, actually, I'm going to get the Intimidate off on the uh, Rampardos just to lower its attack set a little bit. As now it actually predicts my switch into Gramble and goes for the Head Smash. That was a pretty aggressive play on my opponent's part, but it works out because he two it KOs my Gramble pretty easily. And I'm debating if I should save my Gramble or sack it off. But I figured saving Intimidate for later on in the battle is just my best bet overall. So I decide to pivot back into my Haru. I'm a little bit of a risky play because my opponent could have definitely switched it up and went for his own head But if he did carry that move, but instead my opponent just goes for head smash just to play it safe and At minus one attack I should be able to tank it rather nicely as it still does a pretty hefty chunk because Rampardos like I said is very very powerful But after that recoil damage, it looks like he's gonna die from stealth rock So we should just let this thing die to the fake out so down goes the Rampardos thing I don't have to worry about this massive threat demolishing my team now at this point and yeah, down goes Rampardos, thankfully. That Pokemon was so threatening, I'm actually surprised. And now my opponent's gonna bring back out the Masquerade and take a crap ton of damage from Stealth Cox, but he's gonna get that Intimidate off, and this Masquerade is actually looking like a pretty annoying threat, because I don't really have a way to kill it with my uh, Hariyama. And so I decided just to stay in here in case he wants to go for Roost. I'm gonna knock off that Rocky Helmet, but he actually reveals Toxic, not what I was expecting. It's not, I'm not Guts Hariyama, I'm actually Thick Fat Hariyama. I really can't take advantage of the Guts ability, so it's a little bit unfortunate. So Toxic's actually going to will down my uh, uh, Hariyama, which kind of blows, but outside of my control. But yeah, my opponent is going to bring in the Girder here. And I'm hoping that uh, I could just hit the same with close combat before I die and just do a crap ton of damage overall. My opponent, I forgot about Sticky, but he's able to outspeed me and knock me out with a Drain Punch. So down goes my Hariyama. Um, I, now I don't really have a switch into that Magmortar on my opponent's team. And Magmortar can practically Oko everything on my team. So that Magmortar is looking like a massive threat to my team. So now I decided to bring an Electivire instead of my Gramble first because I don't want to make my opponent want to bring in the Electivire. I just want him to stay in with 
with the Skirter, as you'll see why in just a moment. So I was going to go for the Wild Charge here, but I decided that Electric Terrain might be more useful in case I live the attack. And I can just go for a Stab Wild Charge with Electric Terrain and then just do a crap ton of damage to the freaking Girder. But Drain Punch, I'm hoping I can live this attack with my uh, Elective Air, but unfortunately Girder hits a little bit too hard as he's going to get a little, he's going to get a nice critical hit there, which probably didn't matter at all because Elective Air is pretty damn weak. As down goes my Elective Air, unfortunately. I still did a decent amount of work as now I'm going to bring in my swoops here. Now some of you guys may recognize this strategy from my electric terrain video but I do carry the electric seed on the swoop which is going to give me plus two in my defense stat thanks to simple and now since my item is gone and knockoff is going to be doing even less damage after plus two defense as well. I'm going to set up a combine, hoping he doesn't have Stone Edge and he doesn't crit me, as thankfully he doesn't carry Stone Edge, he's going to go for the knockoff, as Swoobat literally eats that up for his snack, and I should be able to knock this thing out with the stored power, because I do have 6 stat changes, plus 2 special attack, a 120 base power, this should obliterate this girder, as down this monster goes, and my opponent's last mon is the Magmortar, and I'm pretty much hoping that my opponent does not pack the Choice Scarf Magmortar, I mean he does have Electric Terrain, or he does have um, Sticky Webs rather, so I don't think he will have Choice Scarf Magmortar, as my assumption is correct, I'm just gonna go straight for stored power here after my stat boosts, and my mortar should be able to go down unless he is the AV set, but even then, it should, still should do enough damage to the point where I can win with Swoobat, and we're able to win late game with my Swoobat, which is a pretty fun battle. Um, I got to showcase my electric terrain strategy again, which is pretty fun to use in the right situation, so I'm glad I got to showcase that. And I hope you guys did enjoy this Wi Fi battle as it showcased some pretty fun Pokemon, and my opponent played pretty well. So yeah, if you guys did enjoy this Wi-Fi battle and want to support my YouTube channel, please be sure to leave a like on the video as it's the best way to show your support towards my YouTube channel and it's much appreciated. Thank you guys so much for your support. It really means the world to me and I just love you guys oh so very much. Anyways, the question of the day is going to be which gym leader is your favorite and your honest opinion? Um, let me know in the comments down below. They don't have to be the strongest gym leader. Um, they could just be like the weakest gym leader. It's more of like a personal opinion. Now, I personally think my favorite gym leaders are uh, Crash or Wake. Crash or Wake is like my first anime crush to BH, besides Kakashi and Five, of course. And I think he has the best personality, and like his gym was honestly really well designed. And I think it, he he just like one of the most memorable gym, leader, gym leaders and my other choice is sabrina from uh, fire red and leaf green or red and blue um her appearance in the anime made her look so badass and unbeatable that i just fell in love with sabrina and i just think that she's definitely lives up to her badass name and uh, her gym leader is no pushover either and since most pokemon games are pushovers in general i think that her gym is actually pretty strong but yeah, let me know in the comments down below who your favorite gym leader is throughout the entire Pokemon series. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching till the end. I'll check you guys in my next video. Bye.